If you guys don't have piles of money to blow, you're looking for the best phone with the best features at the best price, I do not recommend buying the iPhone 10, and here's why. Hi guys, it's Adrian. Welcome back to my channel. I usually don't do this many iPhone videos back to back to back, but I have a lot more coming because I just got my iPhone a little over a week and a half ago. So I'm still settling in, getting used to it, and I have a lot to share with you guys. And not to mention, I have gotten so many texts and DMs from you guys and from my friends and my family asking me the million dollar question, is this phone, the iPhone 10, the iPhone X, really worth buying? So I'll we'll say there are pros and cons to buying this phone, as there are with any, but what's really a problem for me is how expensive this device is considering that it is far from perfect. Maybe I'm just a skeptic, but I'm sorry, if I'm paying over $1,000, yeah, it came out to like $1,260 or something, $1,260. For a device that I'm probably going to replace in one to two years, then this device better be like giving me a back massage and pouring me a glass of wine every night. And spoiler alert, this phone doesn't do that. So in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you guys the best and the worst features that I have noticed so far in these two weeks that I have had this iPhone 10. And I'll let you decide, is it worth it? If you're new here, hi, I'm Adrian. Subscribe down below and give it a thumbs up if you want more iPhone videos. I'm also participating in a Vlogmas this year. What that means is that I'm uploading every single day of December over on my vlog channel. It's Vlogmas, what's up? It's a lot more like behind the scenes of my life. Really chill, really fun, really casual. If you guys wanna follow me along on that journey, I will leave a link to a playlist down below. I'm also doing about four giveaways this whole month, so if you guys wanna win some dope stuff, I recommend subscribing to my vlog channel and finding out how you can win. Without further ado, it's time for some tea. That is the scoop on this phone. Shut up, Siri. So I'm gonna start with telling you guys the best features of this phone because I feel that it's only fair to give credit where credit is due before I start telling you all the reasons why you shouldn't purchase this phone. Best feature number one, an emoji. Now this is not useful or practical in any way, it's literally just fun. I won't say that's my favorite part about the whole phone because then you probably would stop watching this review right now and not take me seriously, but I do really think it's awesome. The facial recognition is insane. The fact that I can move my face around so particularly and the animal emojis like can pick up on every aspect of it. It really goes to show how high this technology of face ID and facial recognition is. So I do appreciate Apple taking the time to put that technology into this phone. I do have some bad things to say about face ID, but I'll save it for the worst parts. The next feature I love is that you can really easily swipe left to right on the bottom of the screen to switch between apps. This is not something you could do on previous models of the phone. So I think it is really awesome to just be able to swipe really easily rather than double clicking the home button or whatever else you might normally do. I'm a big fan of easy navigation, so I love this one. The next feature I love is tap to wake. I actually didn't know this was a feature until literally today, but if your phone is black on the screen and it is just sitting next to you, you can literally tap the screen and it'll wake up. So that is really cool. You can also turn off this setting if you don't like that, but I personally like that because sometimes I grab my phone and it just doesn't go and I have to like push the side button. So I didn't know I could just tap and it's already ready to go. The next feature that I love is that you can customize the video settings on this camera way more easily. Easily. I love that it shoots in 24, 30, and 60 frames. It really gives you that variety. It also shoots in 4K, which I think is awesome. Although normally I just use 1080p because I feel like it's easier to process and easier to view, but it is cool that it can shoot in 4K. This camera apparently is very improved. I'll also give you my little tea on that in a second. The next best feature, which you really cannot deny, is this incredible OLED display screen. This screen is leagues better than any of the iPhone screens. It is noticeably a lot more clean and just sharp. My boyfriend who's like a phone tech expert is obsessed with my screen, very jealous. I'm pretty sure he's gonna get the phone just because the screen is so amazing. So it's an incredible 2436 by 1125 resolution at 458 PPI and it's 5.8 inches across. Basically the gist of that, because I don't talk math, is like it is a bigger, better screen on a smaller device, which is really good for a consumer. It's a lot easier in my opinion to use. I have kind of small hands, so it's a lot easier to use than like the eight plus or the seven plus. So it's actually smaller, but the screen is bigger. So I do like that part a lot. And the last best feature for me personally is that the front facing camera was improved significantly from the previous models of the iPhone. For someone like me who um, indulges in the art of selfie taking, it is really nice that the selfie 
oh my God, the selfie camera. That's not what I'm gonna start calling it, is it? It's really nice that the front facing camera also incorporates portrait mode. I think that's just kind of cool. If you wanna take a selfie with your bae and you want it to look all professional, then that's really cool. Um, but everyone is obsessed with the new front facing and back facing camera. I have to tell you, I am not impressed and I will tell you why momentarily. Okay, yeah, so those are all the best features that I found. Now, of course, I did not talk about every single feature of this iPhone. There are tons of features that are good, that are new, but I really just focused on the ones that were different from the previous models and the ones that this phone is apparently known for. So overall, for being a brand new, very, very, very expensive phone, I wasn't that impressed with the different features. I didn't think that they were that significant. It's time for the worst features. Let's talk about Face ID for a second, okay? I have a couple problems with it. First of all, the fact that they got rid of Touch ID to me is very annoying. Touch ID has grown over the years into one of the fastest, most secure biometric unlocking systems of any modern smartphone, if not the best. So losing it is kind of like an annoying compromise that iPhone X users have to face, and they must now use this new unproven system that is Face ID. I read this in a tweet somewhere. Essentially, Apple is charging us all a thousand dollars to uh, test out like a beta version of a technology, which is a little bit savage. So back to Face ID, yes, it's incredible technology. It is so cool that I can just look at my phone and it unlocks. However, let me tell you why it's annoying. Number one, when I'm in bed and my phone's over there and I just wanna grab it and unlock it and then just like look at it half from the side, like all sleepy with my pillow and blanket half on my face, it doesn't work. I have to like fully open my eyes and stare at my phone. Okay, that's a first world problem. But really like I like to grab my phone from across the way. I like to touch on the touch ID thing. So it's already open by the time I bring it to my face. Not a huge deal, but the fact that that you have to bring it up to your face the second you want to unlock it, kind of an issue. And sometimes when I wear hats or glasses, it doesn't work. I wore a hood and it didn't work. And I'm wondering why. <laughs> Normally with glasses it works, but I have found multiple times that if I'm wearing a beanie or a headband that covers my forehead, it doesn't work. So that's annoying because that has to be a glitch and I, I'm sure that they'll improve it somehow, but I'm not impressed. <laughs> Overall for me, it's just easier to use a finger than a face. It really is, you just touch it. It's your fingerprint, it's easy. You're already holding your phone. You can hold it from wherever and touch it. I prefer that. Plus the verdict is still out whether Face ID will work seamlessly for users of all colors, ethnicities, many more things and we just, I guess, we'll have to see. The next thing I don't love is that it's not very easy to use one-handed, and that is because so much of the user interface has changed. So you now swipe up from the top left corner to get your notification screen, top right corner to get your command center, and bottom to swipe to home. So your thumb has to go all over the screen, making it hard to be a one-handed device. This might not bug a lot of people, but I like it to be a one-handed device. In fact, if I didn't have this pop socket on the phone, it would be nearly impossible to use with one hand because I would have to be holding it fully like this and try to swipe my thumb and it would like not work. So in terms of convenience, that's annoying. Next, I am not impressed with the camera. I've only had it for two weeks. So to be fair, I haven't done a full on camera test. I actually may make a video that is just a camera test that is basically showing the iPhone 10 camera versus a Canon 70D DSLR, an iPhone 7, an iPhone 8, an iPhone 8 Plus, maybe a Google Pixel. Let me know if you guys wanna see that in the comments below because I really think that could be helpful. A lot of people who I say, no, I don't like the camera, they're like, oh, oh my God, are you kidding me? But they also don't have this phone, so they don't know. But I could be jumping to this a little bit too soon, but let me just explain why I don't love it. First of all, portrait mode is literally like your drunk uncle trying to take a picture on Christmas Eve. Like it is so, bad. When you're just looking into the camera itself, it doesn't pick up on you. Like half your face will be blurry or if you're pointing it at someone, half of them will be blurry. Like the preview screen is not right. Granted, sometimes even when you take the picture, even when the preview screen looks like that, the picture may still turn out. But a lot of times I find that half of someone's face is blurry, half of the subject is blurry. It's having a really hard time picking up what the subject is, which is really annoying. In addition, I swear it keeps glitching out because it'll tell me to like move closer and then farther and then closer and farther and it just like doesn't work sometimes. And I felt like on my boyfriend's 7 Plus, it was really easy to use. So I don't know if this is just like a glitch on this software or what, but the portrait mode on this phone is absolute and let's talk about this studio mode thing. Literally, WTF is this. It looks like a fifth grader doing some bad Photoshop to try to look artsy. Like, I'm sorry if that's coming across rude. I do realize that I do photo and video for a job. I'm very critical of photo and video features because I do it so I know a lot about it. So maybe this camera is just like great to the average user, but I still just feel like that's not cutting it. $1,000, my Canon 70D camera was $1,000. So essentially you're just giving me like an $1,000 piece of crap camera with a telephone on it.
The next thing I don't like is how much harder it is to close apps. Again, this is kind of just like an OCD thing of mine. I like to exit out my apps every time I'm doing anything. And on the old phone, it was just so easy to double click and swipe up, just boom, 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 done. On this one, I still to this day cannot quite figure out how the best way to do it is. You're supposed to like swipe up and then to the side to like multitask and switch between the app. But in my opinion, it's just a lot harder to do and it's very glitchy. I tend to just like hold, swipe straight up and then kind of like force touch and then you'll get the whole row of apps and then you actually have to like press and hold each one and then swipe up or click these little red arrows which honestly is like taking it back to old school iPhone 4 because it's like three steps in order to close apps versus just like double click swipe 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 you know what I'm saying so I really really don't like that it is so hard for me to maneuver my thumb in order to multitask everyone's like oh you do it in a horseshoe and then some people are saying you just swipe from the bottom up to the right corner and I'm like Okay, it's all annoying and it doesn't work. And the last thing that's really annoying to me, but this really isn't the iPhone X's fault, it is more just the apps that are catching up with the development of this phone, is that a lot of the apps do not fit the size of this screen. As you can see, like on Snapchat, a lot of the images are just cropped, a lot of the photos you take are cropped, so you have this beautiful big screen, but you can't always utilize it to the fullest, and that bothers me. However, I'm sure over time they will make adjustments, so that is good, but that doesn't account for the fact that when you're watching a video or looking at any sort of content full screen, it is cutting it off. It is cutting off the corners and it is cutting off where this top notch is. That also bugs me. So on YouTube, you can watch normal size and have it be cropped really small, or you can watch full screen, which does take up the whole screen of your phone, but it's cutting out a chunk of content and it's actually cropping in. That's frustrating. <laughs> so overall, this is my two week review, very condensed. I'm not going into depth, but these are the things off the top of my head that when people ask me, hey, what do you think? Do you think this phone is worth it? To be honest, I do not think this phone is worth the price and the reason I say that is because not enough things are different in a revolutionary way from iOS 11 on the iPhone 8 or on the iPhone 7. The software is incredible but the software is available to other models of the phone. This phone, the only things that it has that the other ones don't are like the facial ID and kind of the different user interface but the user interface is not improved in any way in my opinion. It actually is harder to use one-handed. I do like this swiping up from home thing, but it's not a reason to pay $1,000 in my opinion. So if you are remotely strapped for cash, if you are thinking about splurging on this, paying every last penny, I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't. I think the iPhone 8 or the iPhone even 7 would be a great purchase because you're getting pretty much everything this has minus the different appearance and minus the facial recognition. So that is just my opinion. You can sound off in the comments, I, I don't care. I hope that this could help you guys make some decisions and just hear what my insight is. I have yet to do a full camera test. I am looking forward to that because I am not impressed. I forgot to mention the camera sucks in low light, literally sucks, but it always has. And like even people will look at my camera through here and be like whoa it's so good and I'm like what I I don't think it's any better than like my boyfriend's 8 plus or 7 plus anyway <laughs> all right guys that is it for this video actually once and for all thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you did let me know what kind of phone you have down below I'm very curious and let me know your thoughts on this review I'll see you guys in my next video love you so much bye